Project Mercury, America's first manned space program, lasted from 1958 to 1963. The Mercury 7, test pilots all, Scott Carpenter, Gordon Cooper, John Glenn, Gus Grissom, Wally Schirra, and Alan Shepard, Jr. and Deke Slayton. Their task proved that man could fly into orbit around the Earth and return live and well to talk about it. Shepard was first in Freedom 7. His 15-minute suborbital hop on May 5, 1961, proved the United States was catching up with the Soviet Union. Three weeks later, President Kennedy's call for a lunar landing. ...to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. America was launched into a race with the Soviets to be the first on the moon. On February 20, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth in Friendship 7. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. Roger, understand, go for at least seven orbits. Carpenter did three orbits in May of 62. Shira, six, five months later. Cooper wound up the program with 22 orbits in May 1963. Gemini, the bridge to Apollo, used a more advanced vehicle carrying two crewmen. Its goals, test the skills and endurance of the astronauts and practice the rendezvous and docking procedures and other maneuvers for the moon voyage. Astronauts flew 10 Gemini missions between March of 1965 and November 1966. On the second, Ed White, secured by a golden tether, performed America's okay, first spacewalk. He liked it so much, he didn't want to come in. I think I'm dragging a little bit, so I don't want to fire the gun yet. Okay, I put a little roll in, took it right out. Okay, I'm coming over. Okay, stand by. You see me yet? I sure do. Oh, there you are. Look at the camera on now. Okay. This is a... You're right in front, Ed. You look beautiful. I feel like a million dollars. I'm going to pick up. And y'all laugh. I'm back to you. Gemini 6 and 7 rendezvoused in orbit and maneuvered in close formation. We're just flying a nose-to-nose. Roger. We can uh, very clearly see the horizon scanners operating. Roger, Tim. Gemini 12, Gemini 12, Houston standing. Gemini 12 confirmed the docking procedures tested on Gemini's Houston, 8, Roger. 10, and 11. Astronauts got a warm welcome aboard the carrier following splashdown. The Gemini flights were over in November 1966. The crews were ready for the great voyage. But before it could begin, tragedy intervened. Astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, assigned to the first Apollo mission, perished when fire engulfed the interior of their spacecraft during a launch rehearsal on January 27, 1967. Sixteen months later, a Saturn 1B rocket launched Apollo 7 into Earth orbit. Astronauts practiced rendezvous and simulated docking procedures as millions watched their live TV pictures of the Earth from orbit. Apollo 7, Houston, we have you go for orbit. Your go for orbit. Beautiful. This is Apollo 8 uh, coming to you live from the moon. Apollo 8, history's first manned flight to the vicinity of another celestial body. For the last 16 hours. Joe Jim Lovell, and myself have spent uh, the day before Christmas up here uh, doing experiments, taking pictures and uh, firing our spacecraft engines to maneuver around. Jim, what have you uh, thought most about? Well, Frank, the vast loneliness up here on the moon is uh, awe-inspiring, and it makes you realize just what you have back there on Earth. 
Apollo 9, the first docking of the command module with the lunar module. Apollo 10, the first rehearsal uh, in the lunar uh, environment. In about a minute and a half, your AOS is 124.04, and uh, we'd like you to check and make sure the VHF is all off. Over. Houston, Apollo 10, the Z-axis track and now looks real good and real solid. Roger, Snoop, uh, it looks good to us. Uh, your range is coming right in there. Okay, I'm tracking you guys optically. It's really working good. Have you got our flashing lights, John? That's beautiful. And then Apollo 11, July 20th, 1969. 30 feet, two and a half down. Great shadow. Four forward. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. Okay, I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. See if you can pull that end off a little bit. Columbia, this is Houston reading you loud and clear, over. Yeah, reading you loud and clear, how's it going? Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. They're setting up the flag now. Beautiful, just beautiful. Four months later, a second trio of Americans arrived at the moon. Yankee Clipper, I'll turn on my tracking light for a minute, see if you see it. Okay, Houston, I, uh, I'm jiggling it. The surveyor is firmly... They here. encountered no surveyor from an earlier mission. Okay, Al, we're ready to start getting a TV camera. Okay. A big smile. Okay. Jim Houston, Next up, uh, in April 1970, Coast, Apollo 13. Uh, the uh, nip of Jack Frost, over. Uh, well, the little boot and uh, two pair of underwear. Yeah. Uh, we're all reluctant to break out the suit. Yeah, that's that's understandable. Uh, you can you can always use them if you have to. Uh, Two days into the mission, an oxygen tank exploded in the command service module. The crew faced the prospect of slow suffocation. Uh, One hundred and forty-one hours, thirty minutes, ground elapsed time. Right by the high gate antenna, the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. But Not using the reserves of oxygen in the lunar module, and with that module as their lifeboat, they were able to return safely to Earth. January 1971, Apollo 14, the first manned landing in and exploration of the lunar highlands. And on the surface. Does this, Bruce, look okay? Roger, that's a good sight. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful, babe. More firsts. Apollo 15, June 1971. The crew carried eight scientific experiments in a section of the command module. 
They also made good use of the lunar rover for the first time. Well, I can see I'm going to have to keep my eye on the road. Boy, there's a, it's really rolling hills, Joe. Just like 14. Up and down we go. Uh, it feels like we need the seatbelts, doesn't it, Jim? Yeah, really do. March 1972, it's Apollo really 16. The astronauts landed in the Descartes Highlands. They covered more than 16 miles in the lunar rover, collecting rock samples and setting up scientific instruments. Uh, I believe it, Charlie. It's raining, guys. Look at it go, would you, Charlie? You got all your steering. It's great. Oh, this is going to be some kind of different ride. Nine months later, Apollo 17, the last of the Apollo flights. Astronauts landed in the moon's Taurus mountain region. Using the lunar rover, they gathered 243 pounds of lunar samples. Next to the boulder, down to about uh, three centimeters, I was in bag 569. Apollo sent a dozen Americans to rove the surface of the moon and 15 others to fly into the grasp of its one-sixth gravity. They took the measure of the moon and in so doing took the measure of themselves and demonstrated the human potential. They brought back rocks, but as Mike Collins later told a joint session of Congress, it's a fair trade for just as the Rosetta Stone revealed the language of ancient Egypt, so may these rocks unlock the mystery of the origin of the moon, and indeed even of our Earth and solar system. Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. Their journeys have ended, but ours have barely begun. <laughs>